Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on The Flash Season 8. So we are officially past the halfway mark for the big Armageddon event that has been kicking off this season of The Flash, and I think we are all still trying to process the conclusion of the most recent episode and what it means going forward in potentially not just the rest of Armageddon, but also maybe the rest of the show as a whole. But as we know, there are only five parts in this event, five episodes, so there are only two episodes left. And after Armageddon ends, we are actually gone from The Flash until early March. That's how long the break is and just comes down to the CW schedule and there being so many things to air because once again, the pandemic affected premiere dates. So yeah, I know that's a long break and you, you just know, you just know they're going to, you know, they're going to leave us on one hell of a cliffhanger at the end of part five that we will have to sit on for over two and a half months. Pure torture that will be. And it just makes you wonder, you know, how torturous are they going to make that cliffhanger? But we haven't actually made a video on the channel focusing solely on the events of this season following Armageddon. So, you know, episode six onwards. So this will be the first of those as we got an exciting casting announcement for later on this season. And we also have an updated season eight synopsis for The Flash that teases what is to come after Armageddon. So, you know, there's a good amount to bring up and discuss within this video. But of course, throughout the video, be sure to let me know your various thoughts, opinions, theories, predictions, everything like that. I'm always curious to read what you guys are thinking and what from this video gets you excited and also just what you think about certain things from this video. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video and you want to show your support for the channel and the, you know, the video as well, want to drop a like on it to show your support. So the first thing to talk about in this video is the return of a season one character who is dead, or should be dead at the very least. It, I guess it depends on how they return, I guess. But this character is that of Ronnie Raymond, aka one half of the original Firestorm, and also the deceased husband of, uh, you know, Caitlin Snow. Now, this was first revealed by Entertainment Weekly, so I'm just going to read out their little paragraph from their article, which breaks down this news. EW has exclusively learned that Robbie Amell, who portrayed Ronnie Raymond, one half of the original Firestorm, is returning to the CW's speedy superhero drama for two episodes. His homecoming will begin in season 8's 11th episode, though the circumstances of Amel's guest spots are under wraps and locked away in the time vault. Now, of course, we had Ronnie return in the past before, and by past, I mean previous seasons, with the most recent appearance being back in season 3, when the speed force sort of like manifested itself, I guess you could say, as Ronnie to Barry while Barry was in the Speed Force. I think that was the episode where Barry had to try and find Wally in the Speed Force after Savita, uh, after Savitar, sorry, trapped him in there. I think that's what it was. But anyway, so it's been a while. It's been a while since we've seen Ronnie, but that episode was also the last time that Rick Cosnett, I'm pretty sure, who plays Eddie Thorne, appeared on The Flash as well. And he is also coming back this season. So I don't know if Eric Wallace, the showrunner for The Flash, was re just like randomly re-watching that episode and just got some ideas from it. I don't know, but I thought that was a funny fact that they both last appeared in that episode. Now, in regards to Ronnie, two episodes, the first of these being the 11th episode. So it makes you wonder, are these episodes back-to-back? -back? So is he in, you know, in episode 11 and then episode 12? Or is there going to be some separation between the episodes? So maybe he's in episode 11 and then maybe he's in like episode 13, 14, 15, something like that. I would assume it's 11, 12. It's just back-to-back -back episodes. That's usually the case just because, you know, they're not going to let the guy sit up there and do nothing. Now, I'm pretty sure he films... He's, in, he's on an Amazon show and they film the show in Vancouver, I'm pretty sure, or in Canada at the very least, where also the Flash films. So I don't know if this is a thing he's doing between that or before they start filming the new season for that. I'm not too sure, but... um. Yeah, he is a regular. He's actually the lead character on another show. So it's sort of surprising they're able to get him back for two episodes, let alone one. But yeah, it will be interesting to just see, like, I guess, like, if it's back to back or there's, there's some separation. But I guess the big question that most people would have is, well, how the hell does he return? Like, you know, it wouldn't be flashbacks, you would have to think, because it's over multiple episodes. Like, if there was one episode he was coming back, I guess the easiest thing to go would be, like, yeah, flashbacks. That's where it is. But is it time travel then? Because if it's multiple things and the character is meant to be dead, the most logical thing is time travel. So Barry time travels or Barry and co, whoever it is, time travel back to when Ronnie was still alive 
and it's they they spend multiple ep- they spend two episodes maybe even more but at least Ronnie's in two of those episodes maybe that's what happens there because I just don't know how you could do flashbacks that involve Ronnie over two different episodes I just don't know how that could work it could be the case I just don't think that will be the case but if it's not you know flashbacks it's not time travel then what is it is he revived from the dead is he coming back to life I don't think so because it's a guest thing unless he so unless he comes back to life and then dies straight away or comes back to life and goes away but why would he go away where would he go so I don't think Revive from the Dead is a thing. Another option is, of course, Alternate Earth. We've already had an alternate version of Ronnie Raymond from the multiverse. Hello, you know, remember Death... Uh, De- I was going to say Deathstroke, Deathstorm um, from Season 2. So it could be him. I mean, there's always that possibility. The other option is Alternate Timeline. We're pretty much living in an alternate timeline at the moment in Armageddon. So that could be the case there. So... I think the most likely option out of all those is time travel with maybe a backup being flashbacks if for some reason we get multiple episodes of flashbacks around the same time. So I'm very intrigued to see how he comes back into it, but I'm going to put my chips on time travel. Let me know in the comment section which option you think it might be. Now, quickly, as I said before, I'm sure most people remember this. He's the deceased husband of Caitlin. And Caitlin didn't mention uh, moving on from Ronnie in the season eight premiere. So, you know, I guess prepare for some emo- emotional torture there, Caitlin, because obviously someone's back. Now, obviously, Caitlin might not interact with Ronnie, but let's be honest, surely there has to be some interactions between Daniel Panabaker and Robbie Amell. I mean, you're not going to be back Ronnie and not have any scenes with Caitlin. I think that'd be a bit odd um, if they didn't do that, especially if he's in two different episodes. So that if that's the case, we might get, you know, Caitlin from, you know, eight years ago. So or even a, you know, longer ago, something like that. But yeah, that's it with the Ronnie Raymond stuff. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're, you know, excited to see him back. But now, but now let's jump into some stuff that deals with the overall layout of the Flash Season 8 after Armageddon wraps up. And this is thanks to an updated Season 8 synopsis or description that actually came out like several weeks ago, but it was never really put out there into the public too much. I actually think I might've been the first person to post it publicly on like Twitter or anything like that. Like everyone's, I've seen it posted multiple times on different things and they've screenshotted my little uh, thing that I put up. So I think I might've been the first person to do it, but this is actually from the the official Warner Brothers press site. It's just that it didn't get put out by all the trades and stuff, which I thought was weird. Maybe no one noticed it. So yeah, it's not a fake meme type thing. This is legitimate official press material. But yeah, let's read out this new updated season eight uh, synopsis and then try and I guess put together what one sentence uh, one sentence in particular will mean going forward. After defeating Godspeed with the help of his speedster children from the future, Bart and Nora, the Flash is now back to face new challenges in season eight. It's six months later and Barry and his journalist wife, Iris West Allen, are now at the top of their game, both in their careers as a superhero and reporter and as a devoted couple. But when the powerful alien Despero unleashes near annihilation sorry, on Central City, the Flash and his team, Caitlin Snow, aka Frost, Meta Empath, Cecile Horton, the light-powered Meta Allegra Garcia, brilliant tech nerd Chester P. Runk, and retired detective Joe West must once again defy impossible odds to save the day. But... Their victory is short-lived as two new threats rise from the ashes of Armageddon, one of which will unleash unforeseen horrors into the lives of Barry and his friends and change Team Flash forever. So yeah, as most of you would have picked up on, the most interesting part of that synopsis is, uh, you know, that is, uh, you know, definitely worth discussing is that of, but their victory is short-lived as two new threats rise from the ashes of Armageddon one of which will unleash unforeseen horrors into the lives of Barry and his friends and change Team Flash forever. Yeah, like what the hell is going on there? And of course, we're going to have to wait a while to find out, as I was saying earlier in the video, we've got to wait till March until this restarts up again. But it makes you wonder, will these two new threats that are going to be unleashed, you know, that rise from the uh, ashes of Armageddon, are they caused by what Eobard has done? or by what Barry will have to do to undo what Eobard did. So Barry is undoing all the stuff, making himself the Flash again, you know, rewriting the wrongs that are being put, you know, in this timeline from what Eobard's done. But because it's, you know, changing the timeline and, you know, just messing with time, it's going to, you know, allow these new threats to rise from the ashes. And when it says rise from the ashes, are they people that never existed before? Are they alternate versions of people that existed 
I am very curious to see what all this means. But yeah, let me know in the comments, do you think it'll be caused by what Eobard has done or by what Barry will have to do to undo what Eobard did? I think it's going to be the latter. Just because I love, you know, shifting all this like <laughs> responsibility and like, oh my God, what did I do? You know, they love putting that on Barry. So it wouldn't surprise me if they do it again. But in regards to these two new threats, who are the two new villains? I think there's like three obvious ones. I think there's two obvious ones that people are going to want. I've added a third, which I've mentioned in previous videos, and there's also the fourth because you can never count them out. So the two obvious ones are Red Death and Cobalt Blue. They're the two... Well, Cobalt Blue is definitely the big Flash villain they haven't touched yet, which has just been waiting there since season two. And Red Death has already been name dropped on the show back in season five. And just a character that people would love to see because it's an evil speedster that's, uh, well, pretty much just extremely like hell bent on just murdering people. So that Red, like, Red Death sort of falls into the like, you know like unleashing unforeseen horrors and just messing with Barry and his friends. That sounds very Red Death, but it also sounds very Cobalt Blue. It sounds extremely Cobalt Blue, but it also sounds like it'd be extremely Red Death at the same time. The third option I've chucked in is Brother Grimm, just because he's sort of like magic and can sort of like lean into the horror stuff. If Brother Grimm's there, magic, maybe that's how Ronnie Raymond plays into it. Maybe he revives Ronnie, maybe he revives multiple people that have died in the past on The Flash and goes, hey, enjoy these dead people or something like that. And Barry's got to deal with all these like, you know, newly re revived people that maybe, you know, he blames himself for them dying, something like that. We could see pretty much that happens and Brother Grimm could play into that. And of course, the fourth option, the person you can never rule out who we're dealing with at the moment on Armageddon is the Reverse Flash. You can never count him out. I would be surprised if they made Reverse Flash the villain or a villain in this season again outside of Armageddon, like in the proper season, just because I think if they're going to make, if they're going to use him as like the like a big bad where there's like multiple, multiple episodes of storyline, they're going to save that for the final season. However, there was the whole thing where Matt Letcher, and I, I, I haven't done a video on this because there's no real thing to back it up. So I thought I'd just mention it here. I don't really want to just, you know, you know, clickbait it and stuff like that. So I thought I'd just leave it, but I'll mention it here. So it's because it's not going to be in the title, but like Matt Letcher who played the, you know, Eobard Thorne, who's meant to be Eobard Thorne, that doesn't look like Wells, the, you know, original Eobard Thorne, he was in Vancouver, where they filmed The Flash, and he was there for, like, not, like, a day, he was there for a bit. No one knows if he filmed The Flash. No one knows why he was there, or what he did, but we know he was in Vancouver. He posted photos there, people recognised the locations in Vancouver, and I think he just straight up said he was in Vancouver, or at least he said it was in Canada. So... I don't know if that means he's playing into it. That's a wait and find out. But I just thought I'd mention that quickly here. Um, and because that might play out when the show comes back and we start watching the episodes for the back half of this show or back half of this season, might I say. But in regards to this season and the layout of it, what is the layout of this season after Armageddon? So we know we are getting two or three interlude episodes with one of these episodes being an episode with Bart and Nora, which is episode six, which is also an episode with Eddie Thorne. That's an episode that he shows up in. But if that's the case, and we get two or three interlude, interlude episodes, then we only have 10 episodes left in the season after that. There's only 18 episodes a season. So you have five Armageddon episodes, you know, let's just say three interlude episodes, then you have 10 episodes left, or 11 if there are only two interlude episodes. Now, Eric Wallace has also suggested that we are getting two more graphic novels this season after Armageddon, or, you know, storylines after Armageddon. So are they both going to be five episodes? Or maybe I guess one could be six episodes if we only get two interlude ones. Like, I know some people might, you know, be out there thinking like, oh, is that enough? You know, how can that be enough episodes? But look, look you know, because they'll reference the Godspeed storyline from last season, which was only four. But I think the Godspeed storyline only needed one more episode to play out better than it did and then the perfect example is playing out right in front of us right now look at armageddon that story has been so fast-paced and really fun to watch and a lot of stuff going on and we're only three episodes into a five episode story so maybe five is the magic number of course we'll have to wait until armageddon is actually finished to think about that too much and whether it actually is the magic number but you never know so i'm not going to judge it too much because they might actually have good storylines that are set perfectly around that five episode number. So maybe that's why they're planning it out that way. Because even if you look at the Godspeed storyline that finished off season uh, seven, there's no filler there. It's it's just a lot of Godspeed stuff going on. Like it's really focused on that storyline. So 
It just needed another, another episode. So if we got all that and they don't really have to chuck and fill it, they just focus on those storylines for five episodes uh, five episodes each, then I'd be a happy camper. I think I'd be pretty happy with that. And I think most people would be once they watch it. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. If you could drop a like on it, show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions, thoughts, theories, everything like that. I'm always curious to read them. Let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.